Alrighty, today I'm just going to give you a quick tutorial on how to set up subdomains if you've purchased a domain name and don't have access to a control panel for a rented server or you are running your own server. Uh, this, this is uh, instructions with Apache Web Server. I use a program called WAMP, which is an RM1 that uses Apache as its web server. So I'm going to show you uh, how to do it through WAMP. Okay, first thing you want to do is if you're using Apache, you want to go down here to your Apache icon, or, to, or sorry, if you're using WAMP, you want to go to your WAMP icon, uh, single click it, you want to go up to your Apache folder and go to your HTTPD config. Okay. Once you're uh, in your HTTP config, you want to scroll down until you see something about virtual host. It's actually easier to go to the top, very top of the page, put your scroll in, uh, go to find, and just type in virtual host. Uh, that's not the correct one. You're going to be able to tell when it's the correct one, okay? So we want to go down to our next virtual host, next virtual host. Now you see where it says virtual host. Okay, you see the line under that? Uh, it says include config extra HTTPD vhost.config. Uh, you can either put your virtual host configuration in this main file or you can let it use the HTTPD vhosts.config. Uh, if you want it to use the vhost config, you want to make sure to take the pound sign out from the beginning. Okay. Uh, you then want to, once you, uh, if you're using this file, you would do the same thing I'm getting ready to show you in this file. If you've got that pound off there and you're going to use the other file, you need to locate it. Uh, with Apache, I do believe it's in the main Apache directory. With WAMP, they lay things out a little different. With WAMP, it's actually in the WAMP folder. Bin, Apache, Apache, uh, whatever the version number is, config, and extra. In this tutorial, we're using 2.2.11. Alrighty, um, we want to come down here. We want to open our httpd vhost.config with notepad. Okay, we want to scroll down here. First line you're going to need. You're going to need a line that says name virtual host space asterisk. Okay, make sure there's no pound in front of that if you've already got that file there, okay? You want to come down here. They're going to give you a couple examples. Uh, if you choose to use this and it was not already in use, you need to make sure you have a pound sign in front of each of the uh, examples that they gave so they don't read them. Okay, when you want to add a virtual host, when you want to add a virtual host, you're going to uh, add this command right here. Okay. Of course, it's going to be different than what I have here. Uh, it's going to be your first one. It's always going to be your server's name. Okay. Your alias is going to be what it uses. You have to have this very first one in here. Okay. So it'll work for your main site. You need your main site. Under alias, you need your main site again. That way it knows to go directly there. You want to connect it directly to your root directory. So this would be where Apache uh, reads your uh, files from, the very first uh, directory. If you're using WAMP, it's going to be in the WAMP www folder. If you're using Apache, I'd imagine there's a www folder within Apache. Okay. Uh, once you've got that set to your root, and you've got this first one made just like this, so it would just be your domain name, uh, and the alias would be your domain name as well. Okay. You're going to want to come down here to your next one. Uh, you're going to add a virtual host uh, that's going to be serve as your subdomain. Okay, your server name is always going to be your main website uh, if you're adding a subdomain. Uh, you're going to have your document root, which would be whatever file you want this subdomain to read. Okay, my subdomain is brandon.slayerservices.com. Okay, so when you type in brandon.slayerservices.com it's going to set, take you to slayerservices.com and open up this directory. Okay, so that, that's how it works. But your server alias is going to be what you want your subdomain to be. 
and the server name is going to be your actual domain name. Okay. As you can see, I have a couple others here. I'm going to come down here and show you a little bit further. Um, by default, some domains only register as a HTTP colon slash slash and then your domain name with no www. Well, if you want somebody to be able to type in www and still get here, you can set it up as a virtual host. Okay, so for the brand one I just showed you, uh, you're going to type in as the server name. You're now using the brand, your subdomain as your server name in this situation. Uh, yet again, still going to the same directory. And the alias, so if they type in www.brandon.slayerservices.com, it will take them to the brandon.slayerservices.com, which will open the documents within the Brandon folder. That is how you want to set up your virtual hosts. Once that's done, you can save that. You need to remember to restart Apache before your configuration settings will take effect. Okay, now I got pretty stumped because I wasn't aware that you actually had to set up DNS records with your domain provider. Uh, if you don't have a cPanel, you should have a tool with your domain, some sort of DNS tool to edit your DNS. Okay, I use dyndns.com. Uh, you just want to come in here and you want to look at your services that you currently have through them. Uh, I have custom DNS, which is what allows me to change the DNS records. So once you come in here to your DNS, you're going to see where I have set bob.slayer, or where we're just going to work with Brandon because uh, brandon.slayerservices.com, you need to set it as a C name, which basically just tells it when you type in brandon.slayerservices.com, it's going to take you to slayerservices.com. Now, this is important because you need something to tell brandon.slayerservices.com to go to slayerservices.com. So you need something to tell your subdomain to go to your domain name. Okay, once to your domain name, the server settings we just made will configure where what it opens. Okay, now also in here it's very important. You saw the second set that I showed you to get it to go to www. Uh, we need to make sure that when they type in www.brandon.slayerservices.com, it goes to your main domain name, the slayerservices.com in my case. Uh, and then, yet again, the server will tell it what to do. Uh, these are all just C names, okay? That's the only thing you need to know. Uh, this this is a big step that I wasn't aware of to start with. Uh, so you just have to remember to set your C names uh, for your DNS, and and then everything should work fine for you. Okay, uh, I think I think that's going to be basically the same, uh, no matter what program you're using. Uh, I mean, you have to use Apache. Those settings are all based upon Apache. However, uh, whether you're using Apache through WAMP or just a standalone Apache, <coughs> you just have to know your directories. Uh, I think that's going to conclude uh, this tutorial. I thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, you can email me. The email is on the website at slayerservices.com. Okay? Thank you. Bye.